two experts in particular who are going to talk about one thing that you wouldn't naturally associate with digital technology, and that's international standard cycling. So without further ado, can I introduce Karis Jones and Natalie Williams from Welsh Cycling. Hi, I'm Natalie Williams. Um, I'm a PhD student and exercise physiologist working with Sport Wales. And I'm Karis Jones, working as a performance analyst consultant for Welsh Cycling. So we've been asked to come today to present to you on the software and technology that we utilise when working with the Women's British Academy, uh, Academy riders along with their coaches. So we, and also then we're going to try and discuss how we all work within a multidisciplinary team. So we've got staff that are working within Sport Wales, we've also got external practitioners and then also we've got the Welsh Cycling staff as well. So we do hope you find this interesting and hopefully anything that we try and put across that you'd be able to try and transfer into your business. Okay, our presentation today is going to follow a similar approach to how we work. Um, that's by asking the questions and then talking through um, the action points that we complete to work towards um, to achieve our goal. Um, so first question really today is what does business and sport have in common? Um, there's a lot that we have in common, whether that's the KPIs, the goals, a means to measure. Um, so today we're going to start off by showing you a short video um, that will go through what our, what our goals are, what our KPIs are, and what we're looking to achieve. For us, essentially, our main goal is winning medals. So... has sealed the bronze medal with that ride in the kilometre. And he is the Olympic sprint champion and he won it in style. He went down to the wire and I can't believe it. Gold medal is going to go to Lorna Croft. That is a very poor decision. And Victoria Pendleton's career ends on a silver medal. Sir Chris Hoy is the Olympic champion. So hopefully that brings back some great memories from London 2012. So basically from that video, we're just highlighting what our main goal is, which is essentially winning Rio 2016 and future Olympic and Commonwealth Games. So we are trying to support our riders to reach that goal. So when working with our riders, we are focusing mainly on a team pursuit. So this is when we've got two teams competing on the track at the same time, consisting of four riders. So they're trying to basically complete four kilometres in the quickest time. So with that, we are trying to see, as a team, we're trying to work together to try and find out what it takes to win and how this compares to our competitors. Although we're actually looking at a team event, a lot of our KPIs are all set as an individual. All our athletes are treated as one individual, so we try and make those targets for them. But today, we're only going to give you a bit of an overview, so we don't want to give too much of our information away. So we're just going to give you an overview of what our main KPIs are. So just give a bit of an understand where we currently are. So Australia recently has actually broken the world record this year with 4 minutes and 13 seconds, and Great Britain are slightly behind with 4 minutes and 16. So for our riders then to be at that level, they are expected to meet a number of targets, but this is a select few. So you've got peak power output, which is the maximum effort of doing work, and that is between 1,000 and 1,200 watts for men. So within the team pursuit, we're actually expecting them then to reach 80% of that wattage. We've got a standing start, which is between 12.3 and 13 seconds. So this is when our riders are actually on the start line of the track, and then they've got to complete one half lap. Then we've got a flying lap at less than 15.2 seconds. So this is when we've got the riders going at the top of the track, trying to reach high speed, and then dropping down to the bottom of the track to complete one full lap at maximum effort. So at the moment, we're actually one step below this. So we're working with the actual academy riders, which are trying to get into that podium level. So we're currently achieving a PPO 750 to 950. 
a standing start of 12.8 13.4 and a flying lap of 15.8 16.3. So we are still working towards that goal of trying to get these girls into that podium. So our, our primary objective is basically getting these female riders at the best that they can be to reach that podium level. Okay, Karis has just obviously highlighted a few examples of our targets that we're working towards. Um, the process now begins for us. Um, the vital question is how do we achieve this? Um, there are numerous factors that we need to consider um, that can influence performance. This list that we've got up today is by no means extensive, but hopefully gives a few examples. So you've got things like factors we need to consider. You've got their training. So the riders will do track, they'll do road, they'll do strength and conditioning, which is gym sessions. Um, we then have to look at the ratio of improving endurance to strength to power um, to make sure it meets the demands of the competition. Things like te technical and tactical analysis, um, positioning on the track, who's going to ride man one, who's going to ride man two, because there's four within the team. Uh, nutrition, really obvious things for us, things like weight, um, hydration, fueling around competition, fueling in training. Then got athlete well-being, probably one of the most important things. What happens if an athlete gets injured? What happens if they get ill? But also day-to-day -day, things like their mood and their motivation to train. How is that going to impact on their training and helping us to achieve the goal? Psychological preparation. We can do all the, all the training we want, but can the riders cope with the pressure on the day? Can they perform when they need to? And then um, another one is aerodynamics in cycling can have quite a large impact. So you've got the body position on the bike, even things like the helmet, is that an aerodynamic helmet, their bike? Um, so it all contributes to factors that we need to think about of ways that we can then improve their performance to get them from academy up to podium. So having identified a lot of those factors, it's certainly not just myself and Karis that work towards that. We're part of a bigger team. Um, that support these riders, support the coach to try and help achieve this target. So we've got many expertise working together from Welsh Cycling, Sport Wales, British Cycling, you've got people from the English Institute of Sport, um, as well as consultancy, um, all working together to try and achieve the same. So this diagram kind of highlights a very broad example of what we're doing. So I'm not sure if you guys can see it actually. But in the centre, you've got the target, which is getting the academy girls up to podium level. Around the outside are some of our influencing factors, so the physical development, what training they're doing. You've got health, so their injury, their illness. Um, race day prep, so what nutrition are they doing on the day? What warm-up are they completing? And then around the outside of there, that's the team that we're working with. So you've got myself and Karis as part of the team, the physiologist and the performance analyst. But you've also got S&C, you've got nutritionists, you've got docs, you've got the coach. Um, and we've all got to work together to try and achieve this one central target. So within our multidisciplinary team, we have to use a number of software and technology to actually achieve what we want to achieve. So starting off very basic, we use Microsoft Excel to basically dump all our data into that. So everything we collect, it all goes into Microsoft Excel. From that, we've got a new software called Tableau. So this is what we're currently using as a data visualization. So whenever all this data is going into Excel, it's actually coming out in Tableau in a graphical format for the coach to, and the athlete to understand. We then got the SRM and PowerTap. So this is uh, measuring all the physiological demands that the rider is doing on the bike. Training peaks, which is all down to the rider, where they input their information into an online website about the training that they've completed and also about their well-being. Then go on to Dartfish, which is an analysis piece of software. So this is where we live capture all our footage from training. And then this is how we share the data back into the coach and the athlete. Nutritics and Meal Logger are the nutritional software and apps that the riders use to log all their food intake so the nutritionists can keep an eye on what they're doing. Um, and also then we've got the medical and injury uh, database that we're using, which has actually been developed by the EIS and UK Sport. And at the moment, we're actually in the process of transferring to this new system, so we don't actually have full involvement in that at the moment. So this is just basically an overview of what we are actually using at the moment. Um, keeping it simple, at the moment it all works, so we don't want to go and change it. 
Um, I'm just going to go into a bit more detail then about how it's actually affecting what we're doing and how we're feeding it back to the coach and riders. Okay, so starting to actually look at some of the data we collect and how we can influence performance based on this. Um, this is a trace from SRM. So to go back a couple of steps, SRM is a parameter that's on the bike. Um, we then, that data goes to, into a power control that we can download that information. So this provides us with invaluable information on their powers. Um, we can also get the heart rate from that. We can also get cadence from that. Um, what we can do is use that data from a competition to then work out what they need to be doing in training to ensure we're meeting the demands of competition within training. So if we're not hitting and progressing forward in training, then it's likely we're not going to be the best in the world. So to give you a little bit of information on this graph, um, basically, oh, I'm going to go back one. Um, you've got different lines, so this would be a heart rate trace. Um, and then down the bottom here, you've got a power trace and you've got a cadence trace. At the top here, this is analysis that I've complete so that I can get um, average power outputs from each of the efforts they've done within training. We can also then do other training sessions, um, such as a stand and start, so we can look at their peak power outputs. We can look at their cadence at peak power output. And then this data starts being combined with other people in the team, such as the nutritionist, so the power output to weight ratios, all of these factors are influencing performance. And this is what we kind of measure day to day, also over a season, also over the years. Um, at present, this information goes straight into the Excel spreadsheet, but later on we're gonna show you how we've now started feeding that back to the coach and athlete using Tableau. The, the spreadsheet is a lot of numbers, a lot of data for a rider or a coach to sit and look at it and be able to interpret is quite overwhelming. So part of our process of using the kind of software at the moment is how we feed this data back. So it's used, it affects performance, it has an impact. Trade and Peaks is an online system that we utilize uh, to also collect information on training. So this is more used for the athletes themselves enter the data. So they can enter their information from their road rides. Again, we can get power data from this, heart rate data, pace data. Um, then that is also combined with information from the, the athletes, the riders themselves, such as metrics. So you've got things like, um, what is their rest and heart rate? What is their sleep quality like every day? What is their hydration status every day? Um, their mood, their motivation, all of these things combine together to see how the training program is working for them, whether it's going to help them achieve and improve. Everyone's individual, so everyone's going to respond differently, so we can make informed decisions based on this data that we're collecting of how we need to alter trainings for each individual. Although they're working as a team, they could be on completely two different programs to achieve the same goal. Then at the bottom, this kind of crazy graph is a performance management chart. So that combines the information from um, perceived effort, duration of the rides, heart rates and pace to give an overall score. So we can see within a training season or day to day how their training is, is different. Um, as you can see, it goes up and down quite a lot. This is what would be expected is within training periods, we have periods of harder training, we have periods of overload, periods of recovery, and that's all necessary, but we need to make sure we monitor that and ensure that when they are having recovery, they are recovering. Sounds pretty obvious, but you'd be surprised how many actually can't cope with the demands that we're trying to put on them, and therefore they're actually going backwards rather than improving. So Dartfish is our analysis software. So this is what we use on a day-to-day -day basis to live capture all our footage from training. So from that, we can get all our split times. We can embed the SRM data over the top of it so that when the rider is actually watching the footage, they can actually assess where their max power is occurring and then obviously where they are dipping so we can see what part of the race that they need to improve on. So from that, we can also then have the graph. So this is where we input all our split times and then that is then attached to the video in Dartfish where we can refer back to if we change any technique within the, within the starting lineup, 
we can go back to the video and have a look at it, and then we've got the data as well, and to combine that to make the informed decisions. So from collecting that footage, we then have Dartfish TV, which is an online website that we use um, to share all this footage. So each rider then has a login to go into this website, and they can access all their footage over time, so we can monitor their progression. And from that, then we can make even more informed decisions about the training programs they're going to have in the future. With Tableau, this is a very much a new experience for us both. We've only started using it the past couple of months. It's a data visualization software that we've come across that we found that is the best place where we can dump all our data and to provide a visually way to give it back to the coach and rider so that they can understand it. Instead of giving them a database of numbers, that looks a little bit better than what they would find in Excel. So with this uh, just typical month that we've got for one athlete, so you can't really tell much from this graph at the moment because depending on when we're actually training and what competitions are going on. So at the top, we've got the average of first quarter. So this is, just an av this is just looking at what we're doing as a standing start and getting our powers from that. We've also got weight monitoring. So within the weight monitoring, we're looking at the power to weight ratios like we mentioned earlier. Um, and then we can monitor that to how, what strength conditioning they're doing as well. Other areas that we look at is the peak power output, as we've mentioned, and also the sum of eight as well. So if we're doing a heavy gym session, we're keeping an eye out then on the sum of eight to monitor where their weight is. So basically, this has given us a really good way of showing all our information to the coach and uh, how then we can progress on what we can achieve from this data. So looking at our future training programs and what we can actually get from it. Okay, so in addition to the multidisciplinary feedback that Karis has just been through, um, we've also got um, the individual data, and this is from training. Uh, we've got a lot kind of bigger history of data from this aspect uh, yeah. that looks at each individual in particular aspects of their training. So this is actually for stand and starts. So you can see how they're progressing over time. So it actually varies from October 2014 all the way through to at present um, in May. And you can see how they're varying, and we can then track how they're responding. So stand and starts is one of the performance markers that we mentioned at the start of certain powers and certain times they need to be achieving in order to progress to podium. It obviously looks a little bit up and down, but at the moment we're not worried about this. This is what we'd expect to see. Um, you've kind of got, at the start of the season, kind of lower powers, slower times. Um, this then varies throughout the year, which based on the time of training they're in, if they're in an overload phase, they're going through a really heavy block of training, I'm not going to be expecting them to hit their maximum power outputs, I'm not going to be expecting the fastest times. But the important thing is, is they start going back up, thankfully, um, when we're getting close to competition, and their times also start going back down, which is the important thing. So you want to see the fluctuations as long as they start improving. When we start getting into that more rested period, when we're starting to get to competition, then we know we're on the right track. We know that we're hopefully going to improve performance as long as all those other factors I discussed at the start stay together to help improve performance. So I guess one of the key things that we need to kind of highlight today is Everything we do works towards one goal. We can collect all the data, and we know exactly what they need to do in competition. We know exactly how to improve that. We can monitor that progression throughout a season. However, we never know how someone else in the world is going to, how they're going to compete. As we found out in World Championships, Australia went faster than us. So that kind of then takes us right back to the beginning of, OK, we now need to shift our benchmarks. The time that we're aiming for, the powers we're aiming for, are no longer going to be quick enough in order for us to win. So in context, although we can keep making improvements, which is the important thing if we're consistent, we do need to also be aware that it's never going to be perfect or foolproof, and we're always going to have to be ready to adapt. So as long as we adapt and keep being consistent with our monitoring, using our data capturing to ensure the girls are on the right track, then we should be able to keep improving performance. So we do hope that this presentation has actually been a bit interesting and gives you an insight into a different world that we work in. 
Um, hopefully, say, you can see that what technology has done for us and how it's helped us achieve our goals and how we monitor our progression. So we'd like to thank you for, for coming and listening to us today, but we welcome any questions. But we'd also like to ask you guys questions and see what expertise you have to help us. So as you can see from that presentation, all our data is stored all over the place. We've got it in the cloud. We've got it on servers within Sport Wales with the practitioners there. We've got external practitioners which store it in various places. And we've also got it in Welsh Cycling. So we want to try and find a way where we can bring all this data into one place and have one online platform which is secure so that all the coaches and athletes can just log in and just find this information that they need at a click of a finger. Quit easier we make it for them, it makes our lives easier. So if anybody has any suggestions on an online platform that we could try, we would be very grateful for any suggestions. Thank you.